Hello everyone, Ikuni here, and welcome back to Frytober! <laughs> Frytober is the series where every October I play a Halloween horror or monster themed video game. Today we are back with Monster Camp, a game where you're at camp with monsters and, well, most if not all of them are romanceable. Let's get started. Alright, so we are back to blue with week one evening. Um, oh, now I can use the up and down. That's rude. Oh, hold on. I use the side to side on the D-pad and up and down on the left joystick. That's weird. Anyway, okay. Scout HQ. You spend the day learning new skills with the monster scouts in order to earn badges. You're in a badge for avoiding getting lost by properly locating the North Star. Oh. Is this... Okay. That's the same stuff. Okay. You're sitting with Calculester helping him earn his small talk with flirtatious undertones. Badge. When Coach sneaks up behind you wearing his bear costume. Grrr! Oh, hello, friend, Coach. Are you feeling okay? You seem to be growling quite loudly. I'm a bear. Defend yourself against me. I'm going to eat your flesh and crunch on your bones. Oh, dear. It appears Coach is having another nom flashback. My data indicates that we should give him water and chewy candy and find him a quiet, dark place to den for a while until he comes back to reality. I'll go find an empty cave. What? No, the last thing you should be doing in a bear attack is busting out the candy and going back to their cave. Haven't you kids ever heard of Stranger Danger? Oh, but you are not a stranger. You are my dear friend and mentor, Coach, whom I completely and uncritically trust with my life. Uh, why aren't you scared, Calculester? What if this was a real bear attack? You need to know how to defend yourself. I'm not sure if I understand what you mean, friend Coach. For you see, a real bear would likely not be interested in me, as I am made of metal and wires and none of the tasty carbon-based meat that you organics are comprised of. This would normally be a point of insecurity for me, but in this situation, I think it may be one of my better assets. Oh, you're still not out of the woods yet, champ. What if a bear didn't physically attack you, but instead it cyber attacked you? I highly doubt that a bear would have the intellectual prowess to cyber error, error, cyber attack imminent, core functions shutting down, all settings being changed to defenseless prey mode. You look over and realize that Coach has actually gotten out a laptop and is cyber attacking Calculester. You beg him to stop. No, this is good for him. Now defend yourself, Calculester. If a real hacker bear was doing this, he'd have already cleared all your memory caches. No, please, my childhood is in there. Well, as usual, Coach has turned a harmless thought exercise into a life or death situation. You better help Calculester out before he can no longer remember his parents' faces. Or uh, screens, I guess? <laughs> you must summon the hacker bear's natural predator, the hacktivist hyena. Cyber attacks can be repelled with firewalls. Literal firewalls! <laughs> yep, no need to continue thinking this plan over. You whip out the gasoline and matches and start lighting walls of fire around Coach. Wait, what are you doing, Blue? I never suspected you to be an arsonist! Damien yeah, that's bitches. my job. What are we torching, Blue? You try to explain the situation to Damien, but it just sounds more ridiculous the more you try to make it sound reasonable. Luckily, Damien has, Damien has never needed a reasonable excuse to set shit on fire. Together, you light enough firewalls to open your only fire condo, complete with two fire bedrooms and one and a half fire baths. Oh, just very worried. If you two don't stop it, you're gonna burn the whole woods down. I don't understand what you're trying to accomplish. <sighs> We're lighting firewalls. Doesn't that shit stop people from hacking all your porn or something? I mean, digitally, sure, but you're not creating walls. You're just lighting fires in straight lines. Fire isn't solid and solid... Solidity is the singular most important function of a wall. I know that, Smokey the Smartass. It's just a figure of speech. The firewall here is figurative. Mm -hmm. What? You didn't think I could commit arson and be metaphorical at the same time? I'm a man of nuance, damn it! This argument has the potential to go on for some time, but luckily, while Coach is distracted arguing linguistics with Damien, the fire spread to his laptop and burned it to ash. Coach is grudgingly impressed that, in the midst of all this, you did technically manage to defeat the cyber bear or whatever. He leaves because he now feels he needs to prepare a comprehensive course on the dangers of applying metaphors to fire. Ah, 
My access to my internal hard drive has been restored. I can finally feel my tactile senses returning. Thank you, Blue, for saving me. And thank you for not completely burning down the forest. There are many beautiful plants and innocent woodland creatures that live there. Though I do find it a bit touching that you would risk their lives to save me from being slowly killed by my own virus protection software. Oh yeah, that's right. This all started because you were trying to save Calculester. Well, you did a good deed and you managed to destroy a bunch of shit doing it, so that's a double win. And double winners get plus two boldness and one charm. Um, sure. Alright, green. Well, let's put you in the camp dome. That day, you join the merciless trials of the Camp Dome. Your team is faced with the Potato Sack Race. It seems easy, but this is the Camp Dome. And so the Potato Sacks are filled with swarms of bees! Your teammates are discouraged, both because they are not fond of bees and because the enemy team is mostly comprised by sentient bees. Aren't all bees sentient anyway? Giving them a clear advantage over you. It all looks dire for you, but you use your cunning and remind the enemy team that the bee population of Earth is inexplicably decreasing and bees are heading towards unavoidable extinction. This fact really messes with the enemy team's heads, giving you the sketch you need to win. Your nasty leadership skills grant you plus two charm. Afterwards, you get peer pressured into a game of extreme capture the flag. You're very bad at it and end up in jail pretty much immediately. That's okay though, jail is just chalk square drawn on the ground and given some of the weapons the other players are carrying, it's probably the safest place you can be. Milo and Calculus are already in jail. Maybe you can convince them to ditch this game and eat marshmallows or something. Oh. Fellow Hello, fellow airport. inmate. What are you in for? Don't mind him. He's been like this since they put him in here. It's pretty good content. Prison has changed me, Green. Would you like to trade me some cigarettes in exchange for my fundamental dignity? Yes or no? You share your idea, Re. Failing on this dumb exercise and executing a marshmallow heist. What? No, no, no. Can you imagine what it would do to my brand if I was caught cheating at a game? Undermining the laws of reality, subverting life and death. That's the kind of stuff my followers expect. Cheating? No way. Mm. As for me, friend, I have been on the inside so long, I do not think I can ever go back to society. Besides, the real prison here is the prison of negative thinking, you know? No, you don't know. Nor do you agree. But if your fellow prisoners insist that this is a real jail, you'll just have to orchestrate a real jailbreak. What's on social media about your unjust imprisonment, so the masses clamor for our freedom? Prison is all about who you know. Let's get to know that dude Michael in the corner. He's been trapped in here for three years, so he must know something. You approach Michael and ask him how he's doing. He stares you down. First rule of chalk jail, he says. Never trust anyone. I ain't telling none. He's right. We should really respect his privacy. Friend Milo, you have already posted 300 photos of him on Instagram. Of course, I'm respecting his privacy by documenting it exhaustingly. Ex exhaustively. Michael clears his throat. He seems to have had an emotional breakthrough. You know, when we first met four lines of dialogue ago, I didn't think I could trust you. But the time we've shared in here has convinced me you're one of the good ones. I'll share my secret. Ready? No, I need to start recording. Okay, now I'm ready. The truth is, I'm no ordinary inmate. I've been in here for three years, planning my escape. I can't do it alone, though. If prison has taught me anything, it's that the real prison is loneliness. No, no, it's the real prison here is the prison of negative thinking. If you're going to quote my Instagram, please quote it accurately. I, for one, cannot take another day in this godforsaken place. How can I assist in your escape, friend Michael? Every prison escape has to involve air vents, says Michael. It's the law. You have air vents, so obviously you're integral to the plan. And my job is to devise the appropriate hashtag to memorialize our escape, right? Even better, says Michael. As an avatar of death, your job will be to kill the power so we can bypass the alarms. This is all Prison Break 101. But what about Green? Surely he must have a crucial role in our escape. Absolutely, grins Michael. The most crucial of all, Green, will be a distraction. Michael stabs you repeatedly. It's a real bummer. Come on, he shouts. Well, the guards are busy with Green. What guards? This is no time for questions in a prison break. Go, go, go! Your logic is compelling. Goodbye, Green. Sorry about your blood. Later, Green. Remember, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and what does kill you makes you dead. All three of them flee the facility, leaving you to bleed a lot in a square made of chalk. Serves you right for trusting a guy who's been stuck in fake jail for three years. You lose two smarts and one fun. Let's do this! All right, Red. Let's put you in the lake. 
You spend the day playing in the lake. Everything is fun until you mess uh, sirens. Rip off, riff off, kick your ass. But you had fun. Good here minding your own business, sunbathing when you hear nearby laughter. You look over to see Polly and Scott talking at the edge of the lake. Well, Mama said never to each drop, but Mama were never nonetheless raised a horny, nosy son of a bitch, so you decided to listen in. Awesome, boo. Oh man, Scotty, you should see her face. This is hands down my favorite Slayer prank yet. Uh, um, uh, I don't really get it though. You told her there's a friendly lady at the bottom of the lake? Yeah, and that she'd give a worthy warrior or whatever legendary weapon to aid them in their adventures. Now she's gonna wander over here and try to swim for it and she won't find anything. Classic. Oh, do you think she'll drown trying? Then I can finally have another ghost buddy. I've always wanted to have a social group I could possess an entire boy band with. Mm. But isn't lying to Avari about something she's really passionate about kind of mean? Mm -hmm. No, silly. It's like that time I told you all of your favorite stars are actually your friends and they want to talk to you, but they can't hear you, so you gotta scream at them. It's not mean if it's funny. <laughs> Oh, but that wasn't a lie because you're my friend and you never lie to me. So I guess what you told Avari is true. You're debating whether or not it'd be worth it to break Scott's heart about the stars when you hear more voices coming from the other end of the lake. Uh-oh, it's Avari and Hex, and you think you know why they're here. I just don't see the point of this. You already have, like, a ton of weapons. Literally more than I could possibly curse in a lifetime. Can't we just go back to the cabin and finish wop watching Wipeout? Adventure. No. Must Besides, it's all reruns anyway, and I want my freaking weapon! I hope it's a sword. I can already taste the blood off my enemies sliding off the cool metal. Wait, do you lick your swords clean? Well, oh, that is straight up nasty. I've cursed blood before, but I would never, like, eat it. This is impossible. Hey, I don't lick my swords clean. I mean, not, not all of them, anyway. Only the ones I used to kill particularly sexy demons or succubi or vampires who fangs glint in the moonlight right before the kill shot, and then, or, I mean, shut up! What is this, an interview? I need to focus on summoning this lady of the lake and gain my new amazing sword. She should appear any minute now. Well, I'm bored. Wipe out time. You I said, no, word. damn it! Gods, you're the most annoying curse I've ever had. God, you know it's all fake, but you hate seeing Avari's bubble get burst. She looks so cute and excited to stab people. You need to defuse this prank. So before you know it, you've jumped in the lake, prepared to offer Avari her treasure. But you're no lady of the lake, and it's not like you have an extra badass sword laying around. You're out of your katana phase forever ago. Quick, you better figure out something quick before Avari discovers this is all a ruse. Uh, first thing you find from the lake, but can you find something ridiculously useful? Will the absurdity gods favor you this time? You stick your hand out of the water and give Avari the best weapon of all. A thumbs up. Sure. You quickly dive to the bottom of the lake and grab the first thing you find. You throw it back to Avari. You watch her catch it. It's actually a sword? Wow, lucky you. Hell yeah! Thank you, Lady of the Lake! I can't wait to smite the hell out of some fools with this. Wow, I gotta admit I'm impressed. I figured Polly was just pulling one over on us when she said there was a magical sword lady in here. Oh, lady of the Lake, I vow upon my dying breath that I will use your sword for adventuring and justice. Is there anything I can do to repay you, a wise, watery one? Sick, now's your chance. You dive back underwater and quickly scribble a note. It says, you're welcome, Avari, but while my sword is mighty, remember that the mightiest weapon of all is love. Love for red. You throw the letter to Avari and watch her read it. Hmm. It's pretty smudgy, Lake Lady. Could you maybe send just text us or something? Yeah, I can't read this at all, but I feel like it says something positive about red? Is that crazy? Probably, but I'm getting that impression too. You want to go find her and see if she can make sense of this Rorschach looking shit? They walk him searching you. Not sure why you thought writing in pen underwater would work out, but this definitely didn't go wrong. You jump out of the lake and get telled off just in time for Avari to find you. The two of you share a fun bonding experience while you pretend to interpret this illegible note. You get two fun and one charm. All right. All right. Do the woods. Get lost in the woods. Again. Later, you're wandering around the woods with joy, listening to her babble on adorably about the book she's reading right now, when you two suddenly realize you're no longer alone. Psst. Hey, Joy, come over here. I know you can hear me. Ugh. Hmm? Ugh, I can never have just one peaceful afternoon. What do you want, weird talking tree? Hey, I got a name, sweetheart. It's Mike, the magic tree. But you can just call me Mike, because I like you. And I'm here to tell you that you're the chosen one. Dude. Wearing a gold chain, a wife beater and a furry chest. Yeah, okay, been there, done that. Why are you telling me this now? 
because you have a sacred mission. As a chosen one, it's your duty to save the world and vanquish all evil. Enough of this. Yeah, I know. That kind of comes with the gig. So what's the catch? You talking chosen one designated trees always come with some weird catch. Oh, it's nothing too strenuous. It's just that I... Quite a thirsty tree. There's like a million of us in these woods and only so much rain to go around. So before you go off in your world-saving quest or whatever, I just need you to water me. Oh, okay, that sounds pretty doable. With your pee. <laughs> She's just having the worst luck with these pee adventures in the world. Why? Because you're the freaking chosen one. Now hurry up and pee on me. We don't have much time. I don't want to pee on you. I don't even have to pee right now. Oh, come on. You gotta have some of that sweet succulent fluid left somewhere up in there. I saw you peeing on the other trees on the way in. Huh? Well, yeah, I'd go then, but wait, were you spying on me? That's not important right now. Pee on me, dead. No, this is fucking weird and creepy, and I'm not about it. Come on, yo. Fine. If you don't pee on me, I'll go on a hunger strike, and then I'll starve to death, and it'll be your fault. And? And then so much for being a vegan, Joy. Ugh, I guess. Wait, how did you know I was vegan? I'm getting real crispy over here, Joy. Better open up the waterworks and get to peeing on me. Why is it you can never go to the woods with Joy without somebody talking about pee? Anyway, she's looking really conflicted about whether or not to take a leak on this creep, and Mike is starting to rub his greasy little branches together in anticipation. You better act fast and get her out of this before she pees on the tree. Trees feed from sunlight. You must use your unparalleled cooking skill to prepare a dish made of light that's so delicious mag magic tree Mike can't refuse to eat it. Do some research and dig up magic tree Mike's dirty laundry so that Joy can realize saving his life will actually be a detriment to humankind. We're gonna quick search on the internet to find magic tree Mike's dirty laundry in order to prevent Joy from peeing on him and bend to his preferred mind games. Prepare your best PI skills, which are totally not needed since this deadbeat tree has a lot of dirty laundry. You first find a stream of t Facebook posts from his third ex-wife saying he's years behind on child support. That's shitty, but not shitty enough to convince Joy to let him starve. He then finds some posts on some kink forums proving that he's a huge pervert who's into tricking strangers into peeing on him. That much he already knew. Wait, here's a news article that says, oh fuck. Yep, that's a keeper. You show your phone to Joy just as she's starting to unbutton her shorts. What, a plot what are you, what? Mike, it says here you're responsible for the deaths of 23 children? Is that true? What? I have no idea what you're talking about, sweetheart. That could be anything. Plus, I'm way too lazy to murder someone. Fine, that I believe, but it says here the kids died from measles? Heh, <laughs> oh yeah. A couple of years ago, a kid was wandering through the woods and I totally told him he was the chosen one his mission to tell his friends that vaccines were evil and they should avoid getting them. <gasps> Mike, are you an anti-vaxxer? Ah, uh, hell yeah, I am. Anyone who's not an idiot can see vaccines are just a ruse by the government to inject mind control chemicals into innocent people, and that's fucked up. I want to scam and control people. The government can go fuck themselves with their own vaccines. That's- no, no way, we're done here. Enjoy starving to death, you creep. The two you leave Magic Tree Mike to scream about anti-vax propaganda and urine fetishes with someone else. Joy seems really grateful you stopped her from peeing on a creepy stranger. She even gives you a genuine magic smile. It's so sweet and magical, it immediately gives you plus two fun and one smart. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you liked what you saw, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, hit that ding dong notification bell to see more Frighttober videos. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful time zone. Until next time, my lovelies. Mm -hmm.